ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان اصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار we thank Allah Azza wa Jal for allowing us to come together in this lecture to speak about the importance of the Arabic language. We apologize for the delay in beginning the lecture. It was due to a technical issue. So we apologize to those who are waiting for the lecture. Indeed, the Arabic language as we are well known as we are all well known well known or we are all well aware of it is extremely important in the life of the muslim for indeed it was the language that allah azza wa jal chose to send his final message to mankind in this language and because of that you find it Allah has a job reminding the believers of this in his book. And likewise you find it being mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and likewise you find it in the books for the statements of the salaf the importance of this language. And because of that it was mentioned by Imam al-Jawhari in one of his books his muqaddimah to sihha where he has an Arabic dictionary and he mentioned sharaf Allah manzilatha wa ja'ala ilm ad-din wa ad-dunya manutan bi ma'rifatiha Imam al-Jawhari rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has exalted the level of the Arabic language and he has placed the knowledge of the religion and the knowledge of the worldly affairs it is attached to understanding the arabic language it is attached to understanding the arabic language in that statement of imam al-jawhari rahimahullah ta'ala is going to be become more clear when we mention the affair of the disbelievers and more specifically the orientalists as it relates to the arabic language so as we mentioned the arabic language is indeed important because it is the asl it is the asl of the religion of of the muslim it is the asl of the religion of the muslim allah azza wa jal throughout the quran he mentions the fact that he revealed the Quran in the Arabic language and this is a more in more than 10 places in the Quran Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this fact for example in surah Yusuf in the beginning of the surah Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna anzalnahu qur'anan arabiyyan la'allakum ta'qilun Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions and we sent the, the Quran down in the Arabic language that you uh so that you can reflect over it or so that you can 
so individuals can have intellect, so that individuals can have can have intellect. Al Hafid Al Imam Ibn Kathir Rahimallah Taala mentioned in his tafsir of the Quran. He said, وَذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ لُغَةِ الْعَرَبِ And this was when he was explaining this verse in the beginning of Surah Yusuf. Al-Hafid Ibn Kabir Rahim Allah Ta'ala, he said, وَذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ لُغَةِ الْعَرَبِ أَفْصَهُ اللُّغَاتِ He said, and this is because... Can I still be heard? I just want to make sure the sound is correct. Now, Imam Ibn Kathir Rahim Allah Ta'ala mentioned, and that is because the Arabic language is the most eloquent of languages. And the Arabic language is the most eloquent. It is the clearest. It is the vast, it is the most vast language. And it is the language that gives the most in terms of the meaning which the souls, which the nufus can accept, which the souls can accept. This is a statement of Ibn Qadir Rahim Allah Ta'ala. So it is the most eloquent of languages, it is the clearest, it is the most vast, and it gives the most meaning in its wording. Yani, Al-Hazid Ibn Qadir is explaining why Allah Azawajal chose the Arabic language to send down the Qur'an. Yani, it was simple for Allah Azawajal to send down His final book and message to mankind in any language. But we need to reflect over why Allah Azawajal chose the Arabic language to send down this last and final, most complete revelation. It's the last, it's the final, it's the most complete revelation. It is that which Allah Azza wa Jal, and the religion, the last religion that Allah Azza wa Jal would judge the people based on is Al-Islam. Why did Allah Azza wa Jal choose this last message to mankind to be in this language? So Hafiz Ibn Kathir Rahim Allah Ta'ala mentioned it's, it's most, the most eloquent, it is the clearest, it is the most vast of languages, and it is that which gives the meaning. وَلِهَذَا Then Hafiz Ibn Qadir continues to say, وَلِهَذَا وَلِهَذَا أُنْجِلَ أَشْرَفُ الْكُتُبْ بِأَشْرَفِ اللُّغَاتِ And because of that, the best of the books was revealed in the best of languages. وَعَلَى أَشْرَفِ الرُّسُلِ And it was revealed to the best of the prophets. Yani the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَبِسَفَارَةِ أَشْرَفِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ And it was revealed, and yani the Qur'an was revealed by way of the best of the angels, who? Jibreel. وَكَانَ ذَلَكَ فِي أَشْرَفِ الْبَقَاءِ الْأَرْضِ And this took place in the best place on the face of the earth, which is Mecca. وَبْتُدِعَ إِنْزَالُهُ فِي أَشْرَفِ الشُّهُورِ السنة. And the revelation of the Quran was began or began in the best of the months of the year, which is Ramadan. Ramadan. And it was perfected in every way. And it was perfected in every way. So that statement of Hafid Ibn Qatir Rahim Allah Ta'ala is a very important statement and it brings light to why Allah Azza chose the Arabic language. Why? Because it is the best of languages. And he said, he revealed it upon the best of the prophets, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by way of the best of the angels. And it was revealed on the best place of the earth, Mecca. And it was, the, the revelation began the best months of the year, which is the month of Ramadan. So Hafiz ibn Qatir rahim Allah ta'ala said, so it was completed in every possible way. It is completed in every possible way. And that's something for us to reflect over. And we know uh, that the previous books were distorted. 
the previous books, they were revealed, and they stayed amongst the people for a portion of time, and then they were distorted. Portions were taken away, portions were added to it, and the likes of that. But the Quran, no. إِنَّ نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرَ وَإِنَّ لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ As Allah put a mentioned in the Quran, verily we have sent down the reminder, and verily we would protect it. So that reminder, which Allah Azza wa Jal has protected until, until Yom al Qiyamah, Allah chose the best of the languages to reveal it in. Because it carries the greatest of meanings, the most vast of understandings and the likes of that, that is that Quran. And in other places in the Quran, not in like in Surah Taha, at the end of the surah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "وَكَذَلِكَ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًّا." And like that, we revealed it as an Arabic Quran. Like Allah Taala is praising the Quran, and part of that praise is what language he sent it in. It was mentioned by Imam Abdullah bin Ashur in one of his books. Uh, in the Arabic language, in one of his books of Tafsir, he says, وَهَذَا وَصْفٌ يُفِيدُ الْمَدْحَ لِأَنَّ اللُّغَةَ الْعَرَبِيَةَ أَبْلَغُ الْمُغَاتِ وَأَحْسَنُهَا فَصَاحَةً وَمْسِجَامًا He said, when Allah says in Surah Taha, the 113 verse, and like that we revealed it as an Arabic Qur'an, Imam Al-Tahir bin Ashur, he mentioned, and this description from Allah Azza wa Jal informs that he's praising the book. Upon, it informs that he's praising the language. This verse from Allah Azza wa Jal informs that he's praising the language. لِأَنَّ اللُّغَةَ الْعَرَبِيَّ أَبْلَغُ اللُّغَاتِ Because the Arabic language is the most complete of languages. And it is the most eloquent of languages. And it is the most fluent and harmonious languages. It is the most fluent and harmonious languages. And likewise, and we mentioned that Allah Prasala mentioned uh, the fact that He revealed the Quran and Arabic in many places in the Quran. But you have Imam Ash-Shankiti rahimahullah ta'ala, and we, we're talking about Imam Ash-Shankiti who is Sahib Adwa al-Bayan, who is one of the scholars, of the scholars of our time. And he's one of the teachers of Sheikh bin Baz, he's one of the teachers of Sheikh Salah al-Qazan, he's one of the teachers of Sheikh Salah al Haidan, he's one of the teachers of Sheikh Abdul Muthan al-Abbad. Imam Ash-Shankiti rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned in his book Adwa al-Bayan, Many verses where Allah Ta'ala mentions the revelation of the Qur'an and the Arabic language. From amongst them, he mentions Surah Yusuf, the second verse, which is the verse we mentioned already, the one we gave the explanation of al hafid ibn Ghazir. And he also mentions the statement of Allah Ta'ala in Surah Al-Zukhruf, the third verse in the beginning of the Surah, where Allah Ta'ala says, إِنَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًّا لَأَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ Verily, we have made it an Arabic Qur'an. Verily, we have made it an Arabic Qur'an so that you can have intellect, so that you can have understanding, so that you can have understanding. And Allah wa ta'ala also mentions in Surah Taha, we, we've already mentioned it, but because of Imam al-Shinkiti rahimahullah ta'ala and Abu Abu Bayan, he mentions a few of those verses, and he says a statement at the end. So we're going to mention those verses, and then we're going to mention the statement of Imam Ash-Shankit, at the end. The statement of Allah Akbar Ta'ala in Surah Taha, which we've already mentioned, the 113th verse. وَكَذَلِكَ أَنزَلْنَاهُ قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًّا وَصَرَّفْنَا فِيهِ مَنَ الْوَعِيدِ لَأَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ أَوْ يُحْجِثُ لَهُمْ ذِكْرًا Allah Akbar Ta'ala says, and like that, we revealed it as an Arabic Qur'an. وَصَرَّفْنَا فِيهِ مَنَ الْوَعِيدِ And we have placed in it Warnings, and we have placed in it warnings. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ So that they can hear 
أو يحدث لهم ذكرى or that they would be reminded. So Allah Ta'ala in this verse in Surah Taha, Allah Ta'ala says, we have made it an Abu Quran, and we have placed in it warnings so that they can fear and that they can be reminded. SubhanAllah. Then Allah says, وَقَالَ تَعَالَ فِي سُرَةِ فُسِّلَتْ In Surah Fusilat, the 44th verse, Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَوْ جَعَلْنَاهُ قُرْآنًا أَعْجَمِيًّا لَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا فُسِّلَتْ آيَاتُهُ the statement of Allah Ta'ala in Surah Fusilat, Allah says, and if we were to place it, upon, Allah Ta'ala says, and if we were to make it a non-Arab, a non-Arabic book, they would have said, could you have not clarified its verses? Could you have not clarified its meanings? And the reason why, the reason why the Kufar would have said that, is because the people of Quraysh were the most eloquent in their speeches. You find in some of the books of the ulama, the people of Quraysh, they used to have pride and dignity in their, in their eloquence of speech, which is a tremendous calamity now, Wallahu musta'an, because the Arab, the reality is many of the Arab and many of the Arab countries, if you speak Fusha and if you've ever been amongst the Arab, if you speak Fusha, which is eloquent, classical Arabic, they make fun of you. If you speak Fusha, and I don't mean in, in, in lectures, in Islamic lectures and the likes of that, but I mean if you speak to one another, if you speak to one another in the marketplace, in the house, even in the home, if you speak to one another, in, uh, or even if you're visiting someone and you speak to one another in eloquent Arabic, they find it strange. They find it strange, and there's no doubt that this is from the Talbis of the Iblis. There's no doubt. This is, this is one that the traps of the shay Shayateen. Because during the time of the Prophet وسلم, and during the time of Quraysh, it was something of dignity that a person can speak eloquent classical Arabic. But nowadays, it is considered something like a joke to speak. And this is without a doubt, from the Talbis of, Ibli, of, of Iblis, this is without a doubt, from the, the plots of the Shayateen, in order to do what? In order to pull the Muslims away from their understanding of the Book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now let's, let's I, I, I don't mean to, to stop, to pause, while we're mentioning the, the, the speech of Imam Shankiti, but this is an important point. This is a very important point. And like we, we're going to reiterate it. Nowadays, we said it. Nowadays, if you're amongst the, the Arab, whether you're in Saudi Arabia, whether you're in Yemen, whether you're in Egypt, whether you're in Syria, Jordan, and like that, when you speak with eloquent, eloquent Arabic, they find it strange. They find it funny. They'll even laugh at you. If you're in the marketplace and like that, they'll even laugh at you. Why? Because they said no one speaks this way. This is from the Talbis of the Iblis because the Shaitan wants to pull the people away from understanding the Book of their Lord. Why? Let did Allah Azza wa say, when we mention Surah Yusuf, and when we mention Surah Zukhruf, and Surah Taha, Allah Azza wa says, and like that we made it an Arabic Quran so that you can ponder over its meaning. So that you can have intellect, so that you can understand. So Allah Azza wa placed the Quran, eloquent Arabic, so that we can ponder over the meaning. But if you speak this language, this very language that Allah, that Allah Azza wa chose and sent with his best of prophets, by way of the best of the Malaika, on the best place of the face of the earth, during the best month of the year, people make fun of you. See how the shaitan year after year after century after century has guided the people away. If you speak fluent Arabic, people make fun of you. But Allah has chosen it so that you can have intellect, reflect and understand the message. Now, in continuing, Imam uh, Shimhiti Rahim Allah he mentions the statement of Allah in Surah Ash-Shu'ara, the 192nd uh, verse. And likewise, he mentions the statement of Allah Akbar Ta'ala in Surah uh, Ash-Shura. وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًّا لِتُنْذِرَ أُمِّ الْقُرَى وَمَنْ حَوْلَهَا It's the beginning of Surah Ash-Shura. 
And likewise, in Surah Ra'd, Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ أَنزَلْنَاهُ حُكْمًا عَرَبِيًّا Like that, we have sent it down with Arabic wisdom. Uh, in Surah Ar-Ra'd, and then the statements, and Imam Shankit Rahimahullah Ta'ala says, إِلَى غَيْرِ ذَلْكُ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ And other than that from verses, so after mentioning, after mentioning about eight verses, Imam Shankiti Rahimahullah Ta'ala says, وَإِلَى غَيْرِ ذَلْكُ مَنَ الْآيَاتِ To other than that from the verses, and then he says, وَهَذِهِ الْآيَاتِ الْقُرْآنِيَ تَدِلُّ عَلَى شَرَفِ لُغَةِ الْعَرَبِيَ وَعِذَمِهَا دَلَالَةً لَا يُنْكِرُهَا إِلَّا مَكَابِرِ Imam Shankiti Rahimahullah Ta'ala says, and these Quranic verses inform of the tremendous status and greatness of the Arabic language. And these verses, these Quranic verses, inform and give proof of the tremendous status and reverence and greatness of the Arabic language. No one would deny that except one who is prideful. No one would deny that except one who is prideful. So, in reality, it is clear these several verses that we mentioned from the Quran and the statements of the ulama with regards to those verses. So why, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention over and over again the Arabic language? Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention over and over again the Arabic language except because of its importance? And likewise, in continuing, uh, the statement of Allah Taala in Surah Al-Dukhan, the verse 58, Allah Taala mentions, إِنَّمَا يَسَرْنَاهُ بِلِسَانِكَ لَأَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ Allah Taala says, and verily, we placed it, with, we placed it, meaning the Qur'an, with, we made the Qur'an, or we revealed the Qur'an, and the language of one, we revealed the Qur'an, not placed the Qur'an, we revealed the Qur'an, in the language of your tongue, yani the tongue of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which was the Arabic language. We reveal the Quran in the Arabic language so that they can be reminded. So that they can be reminded. Al Hafiz Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala said in regards to that, he says, I inna yasarna have al Quran. Afwan inna yasarnahu bi lisanika afwan. The, the translation of the verse. Verily, we have made it easy with your tongue. Meaning, we've made this Quran easy with the Arabic language so that they can be reminded. Al Hadid ibn Kabir rahimahullah ta'ala says, I inna yasarna have al Quran, alladhi anzalnahu sahlan, wadihan, bayinan, jaliyan, bilisanika alladhi huwa afsahu lugat. وَأَجْلَاهَا وَأَهْلَاهَا وَأَعْلَاهَا To the end of the statement of Hazrat Ibn Kathir Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says, meaning, we have made it easy, this Qur'an, that we have sent down to you, we have made it sahlan, easy, wadihan, clear, bayyinan, which is with clarity, jaliyan, it's clear and it has clarity, its meaning is clear. Its speech is clear. بِلِسَانِكَ الَّذِي هُوَ أَفْصَهُ اللُّغَاتِ What have we done with it? We have revealed it in the Arabic language, which is the most eloquent of languages. The أَجْلَاهَ is the clearest of languages. وَأَحْلَاهَ It is the purest of languages. وَأَحْلَاهَ And it is the most supreme of languages. It is the most supreme. So it is easy. It is eloquent, it is clear, it is pure, and it is supreme. And it is supreme. And that's something that we need to reflect over. That is something that we all need to reflect over. Because once again, Allah Azawajal, Allah Azawajal is the one that has, has made the Mughat. Allah says, Allah created you and that which you do. Allah Azawajal created you, and that which you do. 
It was simple for Allah to reveal the Quran, which is the final message to all of mankind. It was easy for Allah to reveal it in any language. But why would Allah choose this particular language? Because it is eloquent, because it gives the most, uh, the, the, the meaning, it gives the direct meaning, it is the clearest, it is the purest, and it is the most supreme of all languages. And because of that, Ibn Faris, Rahimahullah, one of the salaf, he mentioned it in his, uh, one of his books, he says, فَلَمَّا خَصَّ جَنَّتَنَاؤُهُ اللِّسَانُ الْعَرَبِ بالبيان علم أن سائر اللغات قاصرة عنه وواقعة دونه Imam Ibn al-Faris رحمه الله تعالى He said when Allah the most sublime when Allah chose the Arabic tongue for the clarification and for the clarification of his religion and that clarification is Quran and and Sunnah that clarification is Quran and Sunnah, when Allah specified and chose and selected the Quran, which is uh, which was revealed in the Arabic language, it is known. It is known from this. It is deducted from this that every other language is deficient as it relates to the superiority of the Quran. Every other language is deficient. He says, For Ulima, and Nasa'il Lugat, Qasiratun Anhu, Waqi'atun Duna. They are deficient in relation to the Quran, and they are less. They are less. So, this is something which, in reality, is upon us to all reflect over. And it's upon Allah that Allah chose this Quran. And revealed it. Upon that, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala chose this language to reveal in it the final message to mankind. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. And the reality is, if we as Muslims understand that reality, then it is upon us to do what? It is upon us to have iqbal. It is upon us to have uh, the desire to to study this language, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala selected it for a reason which makes us understand and clarifies for us if you truly want to understand the speech of your Lord it is upon you to learn that language not to read the translation of the meaning of the Quran and to read this and the explanation and no no it's upon you to learn that language and we can say and we will say that a person that reads the Quran meaning the meaning of the Qur'an, an individual that reads the meaning of the Qur'an, he will not truly have, <coughs> he will not truly understand specifically what his Lord meant. He will, he will get a general meaning. He will get a general understanding. But specifically, what Allah Azza wa Jal meant and intended, is what he revealed in the Arabic language. So, with that being the case, it's upon the believing brothers and the believing sisters to reality to 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 give focus to that language. And the reality is, if you truly want to understand the Book of Your Lord Taala, if you truly want to understand the Book of Your Lord Taala, it is upon you to understand that language. And we know the Khushua. as Allah Taala mentioned. Uh, that he sent down the Quran as a, as a cure. That Allah SWT sent down the Quran so that we can reflect. Allah sent down the Quran as a reminder. Allah sent down the Quran as as, as a warner. Allah SWT sent down the Quran فِيهِ شُفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي صُدُورٌ وَحُودٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ مِنْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah SWT says فِيهِ شفاء. In it is a cure. وَحُودًا and guidance. وَرَحْمَةٌ and mercy. All of that is in the actual language. Yes. Of one, all of that is in the actual language that Allah sent it down in. Not just the meaning or what we derive. No, all of that is in the actual language that Allah Taala sent down. And that's why you have the ahadith where the the kufar they selected individuals 
with the Kufar selected individuals from amongst Quraysh, who were, who were the most eloquent, and you can find this in Sahih Muslim and others, who were the most eloquent in speech. And they said, go to that man and tell us, please tell us. They, they, they got poets and they got individuals who were very eloquent in speech, and they said, go to that man and please prove to us that he is a poet. And those individuals returned to them and said, I know poetry. I know speech. That which that man is saying is not poetry. I've never heard the likes of that speech. That's what was said by them. But was that a translation? Was that the meaning of the Quran? No, that was the very speech that was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Abu Bakr radiallahu it was mentioned in Abu Bakr, and you can find this in his Sahih Sirah, you can find this in the authentic Sirah of the Prophet and you can find them in, in, you can find this in the books of Hadith. It was mentioned that Abu Bakr anhu, when he wanted to leave the city of Mecca because of the persecution of the, the, the Quraysh, he had decided to leave. And the individual from amongst the people of Quraysh approached Abu Bakr and said to Abu Bakr, you are the type of individual that Everyone should be, and you're the type of individual that we are honored to be our neighbor. This was a cather from the most the disbelievers of Quraysh. Approached Abu Bakr and said, no, you're not the kind of guy that should be driven out of the land. Please, come, stay with me. So this individual brought Abu Bakr and made him his guest. Abu Bakr would stand in prayer at night. Our your beloved, this beloved companion, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would stand in prayer at night and he had a beautiful recitation. The people, the women and children of Quraysh used to come and gather outside of the home of this individual just to hear the speech of, uh, just to hear the recitation of Abu Bakr until it became a major problem. Until it became a major problem. So this individual came to Abu Bakr and said, it's, it's, I'm sorry. I apologize. It's a major problem. Women and children are gathering just to hear your recitation. So Abu Bakr finally said to him that, you know, uh, if it's, it's, it, and I'm paraphrasing this whole story, but Abu Bakr finally said to him, if it's a problem, then I would leave. And Abu Bakr, anhu, he wanted to migrate to Al Habasha. He wanted to migrate to Al Habasha. The Prophet said, Allah was saying, approached Abu Bakr and said, no, Allah has revealed, has revealed something else, Yani, you would be my companion to our migration at a later time. So Abu Bakr stayed, but the reality is, what were they listening to? What was it that was catching the, 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 the minds and the, the hearts of the people of Quraysh? It was that book that was revealed. It was that book, that book that was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the reality is, upon every believing man and upon every believing woman, if you want to get that true guidance, because there's no doubt, when the land hunt, we've entered into the fold of Islam, and we read that book and we benefit from it. But do we benefit from it to our, our fullest capacity? To our fullest capacity? Capacity? No, we don't. Why? Because we don't understand the language that it was revealed in. And I've mentioned this in a, in a previous lecture. The reality is Allah revealed the Quran as a reminder, a, a, a warner, reflection, so that you can reflect, understand the likes of that. That is on a daily basis. That is on a daily basis. So when you attend the masjid, مثلاً, as a brother, if you attend the masjid, Salat al-Fajr, you get that reminder. When Allah, when the Imam, when the Imam is reciting from Surah Al-Hajj, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّ الزَّلْزَلَ فِي السَّاعَاتِ شَيْءٍ عَظِيمٍ Oh, mankind, fear your Lord. Verily, the trembling of the hour is something tremendous. You get that reminder. And then, Salatul uh, Salat Maghrib, you get that reminder. Then, Salat al Isha, you get that reminder. And when the female is in her home and she's reciting, she gets that reminder. As long as she can focus, she gets that reminder. But when an individual doesn't, subhanAllah, think about this, as most of us are. Uh, converts to Islam. Think about that. If you don't understand that language, then it's possible you go Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and you don't really understand anything. Unless you open up the Quran and read it. But many of us don't have time to open up the Quran and read it. But we got to pray every day. We got to pray five times a day. 
just that prayer five times a day should be enough to remind you about your Lord Subhanahu wa Taala. And even if you're reciting the small surahs, Subhanallah, look at that. How many of the small surahs are about Tawheed and and Yom Al Qiyamah? Many of the small surahs. Look at the hikmah of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Many of the small surahs are about Tawheed and about Yom Al Qiyamah. So even if you don't know large surahs, but you know small surahs, you still have a reminder. إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها when the earth crumbles and everything which is inside of the earth comes to the surface وقال الإنسان ما لها and the people say what is wrong with it يوم إذا تحدث أثقالها that day it would speak بأن ربك أو حالها because Allah عز وجل gave light to the earth وما إذن يخبر الناس أستاكر يرى أعمالهم the people on that day their deeds will become in front of them فمن يعمل مثقال غزة خير يرى وأبي في سنتنس ما وأبي في سنتنس ما he will see it ومن يعمل مثقال غزة شر يرى وأبي does an Adam's way and some say the smallest of ants Whoever does even the size of an ant of evil, he will see it. And whoever does even the size of an ant of the size of an ant of good, he will see it. And it is even small reminders. But you need to reflect on it. You need to understand it. And because of that, the Arabic language needs to be studied. It needs to be studied. You had the statements. Of Sheikh Salah Ala Sheikh Habib Allah Ta'ala in one of his lectures about the Arabic language. He says, Ihtimam al Muslimin bi kitabi rabbihim nab'a minhu ihtimamuhum bi lughat al Quran. He said, The Muslims focus and then giving importance to the book of their Lord. What stems from that? And he said, the Muslims focus upon the book of their Lord, their focus upon the language of the Qur'an stems from that. I'll say it again. The Muslims focus upon the book of their Lord, their focus, or their, their, their giving of importance, I should say I'm translating it, their giving of importance to the language of the Qur'an stems from their focus on the book of their Lord. I'll say it again. Uh, the, the Muslims focus on giving importance to the language of the Quran stems from it stems from their focus and importance to the book of their Lord. So the reality is if we don't have any or if we have very little focus and desire to learn the Arabic language, that means we don't really have focus and desire to learn the speech of our Lord. And that's reality, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it, whether you're willing to admit it. Whether you like it, whether you're willing to admit it, it's reality, my brothers and sisters. If you don't give any importance to learning the the Arabic language, that means maybe there's not much that means maybe there's not much love and desire to learn uh, uh, to learn the Quran. Because if you had a major love of the Quran, extreme love, desire, then you would have the love and desire to learn the Arabic language. So that's reality. That's something that we need to that, that's something that we need to reflect over and think about day and night. How much do I love the book of Allah? I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm in love with it. SubhanAllah, I love the Quran, but you don't understand it. You could hear all the recitals day and night. You could hear, listen to uh, Muhammad Siddiq and Nishawi. You can listen to Mahmoud Khalil al Hushri. You can listen to Abdul Basir Abdul Samit. Oh, oh, you can listen to all of the recitals day and night. And you don't understand this. How many of us we have the Quran playing in our cars and we don't understand it. You don't understand what, how is that? How is your love of your Lord? How is your love of the, the, the book of your Lord? How is your love of the, the language of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but you will, uh, you're content to go year after year as a Muslim 
without understanding this language? You, you, it's, it's important that we reflect over that. It was mentioned by Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala. It was said to him, وَسُئِلَ الْحَسَنِ مَا تَقُولُ فِي قَوْمٍ يَتَعَلَّمُونَ الْعَرَبِيَّةِ It was said to Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala, what do you say about people that learn the Arabic language? فَقَالَ أَحْسَنُوا يَتَعَلَّمُونَ لُغَةً لُغَةَ نَبِيِّهِمْ He said they have done good. For verily they are learning the language of their Prophet. For verily they are learning the language of their Prophet. So the reality is, learning this language, this is the language that Allah chose to send the book, this is the language of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you want to learn, if you truly want to learn your deen, what Allah intended, if you truly want to feel that Allah has spoken to you, then it is upon you to learn this language. If you understand, if you want to truly hear that Allah is speaking to you when, 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 when those verses are being recited, whether it's in your car, whether it's in Salat. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look at that. There's a hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, May Allah have mercy upon Fulan. He has reminded me of a verse that I forgot. Imagine that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was listening to, listening to an individual recite the Quran, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, May Allah have mercy upon this individual. He reminded me of a verse that I forgot. So that's one. Two. The Prophet Sallallahu said to one of his companions, recite the Qur'an. And the companion said, Aqra alayk al-Qur'an wa alayk unzi. He said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, recite to me the Qur'an. The individual said, I'm going to read the Qur'an to you and it was revealed to you. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, in the an asma'ahu min ghayri. Verily, I love to hear from other than me. So the individual began to recite Surah Al-Nisa. And until he re- until he reached the verse, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا بِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا بِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَىٰ أُولَاءِ شَهِيدٍ uh, The statement of Allah Barakah in Surah Al-Nisa. So what would the case be when we bring every nation وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَىٰ أُولَاءِ شَهِيدًا And we will bring you as a witness to all of the nations. We will bring you as a witness to all of the nations. And the companion, if I'm not mistaken, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he said, I looked at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for either aynahu tabiruta. He said, I looked at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his eyes were flowing with tears. And he said, hasbuk. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that's enough. Look, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reflecting the meaning, the Arabic language. What would the case be when we bring over the nations and then we bring you as a witness to those Nations, the Prophet Sallallahu his eyes were flowing with tears. And that's the reality. When you hear that book, when you hear that those verses being revealed, it's a cure. If you can, it's a cure, it's guidance, it's mercy, it's a reminder, it's a warning. It's telling the believers, Allah is speaking to the believers directly. Ya ayyuhal nash, ya ayyuhal ladina aminu. Allah says, Allah says, Say to the believing men, say to the believing women, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, Ya ayyuhal ladina amnu, O believers. So all of this is a reminder for us, but we can't understand that reminder if we don't know the Arabic language. So this is something that we need to reflect on. And it's not sufficient. It is not acceptable. Nor is it sufficient. It is not logical that we would spend year after year, year after year, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years as Muslims, and we are negligent of this language that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically chose to send his book in. With that being said, I'm going to mention another reality. And that is the Kufar, to some extent, realize the importance of the Arabic language more than billions, or let's say thousands, of Muslims. The Kufar. What is my proof of that? My proof of that are 
or mm-hmm. is, the many Arabic, Western, I'm talking about Western, Arabic institutes that are around the world that were started not five years ago, not 10 years ago, but we have some of them that were started over 20 years ago to study the Arabic language. The Kufar in England, in America, in other parts of Europe, studying the Arabic language. Why? Why? Because if, and I don't have much time to go into some of the things that they've mentioned, but the reality is when they realized and there's proof of this. There's proof of this. If you go, if you just go into some of the the, the statements uh, that they have on their websites, for ex- for example, the Orientalists, the Orientalists in Europe, you know, they have different websites. Islamic contributions to medieval Europe. They have that. They have Islamic contributions to astronomy and mathematics. They have Islamic contribution to medicine. They have Islamic contribution contribution to technology. They have Islamic, so, and, and I'm going to ask something. Here they admit on the internet and in their books and in their libraries, they admit that the West, European, the Europe and America, they've benefited from mathematics, they've benefited from uh, classical knowledge, they've benefited from Islamic sciences, they've benefited from uh, astronomy and mathematics, they've benefited from medicine, and they've also benefited from running societies. They've also benefited from running societies, but they're not so uh, they're not so much in a rush to clarify or to bring that to the public eye, that they've benefited from running governments, because Islam, Islam is a perfect way of life. It's a religion that was revealed to in, 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 you know, to run a society. So in terms of, you know, uh, social security, in terms of Islamic law, in terms of all of that. If you go into the books, and many of the people that are learned would know this. If you go into their books, whether that's at Harvard, Hartford, whether that's at Oxford, whether that's at Cambridge, you will find many references to Islamic books. You will find many references to Islamic books. Those Islamic books were originally printed in Arabic. So the Kufar realized, in order to tap into the source of Islamic knowledge, whether it's science, whether it's astronomy, medicine, whether it's law, they had to learn the Arabic language. SubhanAllah. They realized the importance of learning the Arabic language, and many of us, thousands of Muslims around the world, don't realize the importance of that. And because of that reality, and I don't have time to go into specifics, but because of that reality, what do we have? Just a quick example of what we have in terms of uh, in terms of what they've done. Danny, we know one of the best Arabic dictionaries is what? Hainsbury Dictionary. Hainsbury Dictionary, which was printed in, uh, you had it printed in New York, but it was also printed uh, previously in Europe, when was it first printed? It was printed in 1960. One of the best Arabic dictionaries was printed in 1960 by Orientalists. Even the author of the dictionary is not a Muslim. Haynes Weir is not a Muslim. You know? And it was edited by J. Milton Cohen. J. Milton Cohen in 1960, and then it was printed again in 1976, Edit, edited this Arabic, this, uh, the Haynes Weir. It's called Haynes Weir Dictionary. And you can find it in many uh, Islamic bookstores because it is considered one of the best Arabic dictionaries. Okay? First printed in 1960, and then it was also printed in 19, 1976. And it is more than 1,000 pages, and it is considered one of the best Arabic dictionaries. Why did they... Why? Why did they take from their time? You tell me, why did they take from their time to make an Arabic dictionary? Because they were studying Arabic. Why? Because they realized the tremendous benefit which is present in the original Islamic sources, whether it's Quran or whether it's Sunnah. Ah, let's show you about the Sunnah. One of the best 
and this is mentioned even by the scholars, one of the best Islamic references for hadith is called Al-Mu'ajam Al-Mutahrat Li al fadh Al-Hadith Al-Nabawi, which is called basically, uh, I don't know how they translate it, but maybe they call it the, the Hadith Lexicon. They call it the Hadith Lexicon. It's called Al-Mu'ajam Al-Mutahrat Li al fadh Al-Qur'an Al-Hadith Al-Nabawi. And up until recently, it was considered one of the greatest uh, lexicons for finding hadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we open it, we find it was first printed, uh, or the, the print that I have, I have it right in front of me, in 1936. It was first, print, it was first, first printed uh, in Leiden, in, in, in the Netherlands, it was printed in the Netherlands in 1936. Now what is this book about? This book is an index. If you're looking for hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and before I continue, it's by the Kufar. It's by non-Muslims in Arabic. It's by non-Muslims in Arabic. If you're looking for a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you know the beginning of the hadith, or you know the subject of the hadith, you can open this book. It's about nine volumes, and you can find it. They did it for which books of hadith? Qutb al sitta Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi, Nisa'i, and Ibn Majah. Only? No. They did it for Qutb al sitta And they did it for the Musnad of Imam al-Darmi. Imam al-Darmi. And they did it for the Muwatta of Imam Malik. And they did it for the Musnad of Imam Ahmed. So the Qutb al sitta the six books. The Muslim of Imam al-Darimi, that's seven. For the Muwatta of Imam Malik, that's eight. And for the Muslim of Imam Ahmed, for nine books of hadith, they did an index for nine books of hadith, and it's in Arabic. And it was first printed in 1936 in the Netherlands. SubhanAllah. Why did they do such a thing? So first we mentioned Haynes Weir, which is one of the best dictionaries that was ever, Arabic English dictionaries, that was ever printed, which were first printed in 1960. Then we mentioned Al-Mu'jam Al-Mutahris Li al fadh Al-Hadith Al-Nabawi, which is eight or nine volumes, first printed in 1936 by disbelievers. Why? Why? Before we continue, why did they focus on this? And this book is in Arabic. Why did they focus on this? Because they knew that much. Yeah, I understand. At that time, they were building societies in the 11th, 12th century, 13th century, and the likes of that. They were building societies. They said, when they did some study, they found out that Islam has answers to many things. Why reinvent the wheel? But in order for them to get to the origin of the knowledge, they had to learn the Arabic language, so they began to study the Arabic language. Hi. Right, moving on. Many of us remember the 201 Arabic verbs, fully conjugated Arabic verbs, yes, which is by the Kufar, which is by someone by the name of Raymond Schindling, right? Raymond Schindling, who was an associate professor of medieval Hebrew literature, and he's at the Jewish theology, theological uh, someplace in, in America, right? He first printed his 201 Arabic verbs when? He first printed it, and I have a copy right in front of me, in 1978. He first printed it in 1978 in New York. Why would he print a book of 201 fully uh, conjugated Arabic verbs? Because they were studying it. But to show you, not only were they studying, but they continued to study it. Why? Because now, now we're in 2015, but the same individual, he first printed his, like we said, he first printed his first book, which was in 19 what? We said it was in 1978, and I have a copy in front of me. Now, if you go to Jareer, uh, from Jareer is in Saudi Arabia, if you go to Barnes & Nobles in New York or whatever, the same book, the same book, now it's called 501. He continued to add Arabic verbs, and now it's reprinted in 2007, which was a few years ago. And now it's 501 Arabic verbs. The reality is, my brothers and sisters, these people are learning Arabic language. 
They have institutes for learning the Arabic language. They have institutes for teaching. Why? Because they know the source of this knowledge, which is perfect, which is complete, which is clear, which is comprehensive. They know it is in the origin of the religion. Or the, I should say, they know that it is in the original language of the religion, which is in Arabic. Now, that's a problem. Why? Because, one, they know something Muslims don't know. That's one. Many Muslims don't know that. Two, many of us are dazzled. Many of the Muslims here today, especially the, those that go to universities, are dazzled with the knowledge of the Kufar. They say, wow, this is something wonderful. This is something great. When they learn about these different laws and they learn about these different, you know, these different constitutions and these different principles and the likes of that, they, they, they're dazzled by the Kufar. The Kufar got that knowledge, much of that knowledge from the Muslims. The Kufar got much of that knowledge from the Muslims in the original language, in Arabic. They understood the importance, so they built these institutes, and they learned the Arabic language. Many of the Muslims today, we're dazzled by the Kufar. We're not learning the Arabic language. We don't realize the importance of it. And look how the shaitan has tricked us and pulled us away from the original language, which Allah SWT has chosen to send his book, his final book, and his final messenger in. So this is something, and if I had more time, we'd dis we discuss that more in detail, but this is something which is important for uh, myself and my, my brothers and sisters to, to realize. And if you go on the internet, you will find, you know, names, and even Oxford, even in the UK, you have Oxford, and one of the best Arabic English dictionaries is Oxford Word Power. One of the best Arabic English dictionaries is Oxford Word Power, which comes from Ox Oxford, UK. And it was something which was printed 20 years ago. And it is, to this day, is considered one of the best dictionaries. And we also have the, the, the E.W. Lane Arabic English Lexicon, which was printed by the Islamic Text Society. And the Islamic Text Society is not an Islamic group. It is a non-Islamic, uh, non it's, 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 it's a Kafir uh, group in England. It's a Catholic group in England, and this book was first printed uh, in 1984. One of the first prints of this book was in 1984, and this book has over 3,000 pages. It's an Arabic English lexicon. Why would the Kufar take from their time, take from their effort, take from their, their, their finances to support such, a, such you know, these projects? Why? Well, because they know that Islam is the cure, has the answer for running societies, for laws, for, for, for social security, for all of this, and many of the Muslims don't know that. And many of the Muslims don't know that. So the reality is, it's upon us as Muslims to realize this. First and foremost, because of Allah praising this language in his book. And it being the language of the Prophet and it being the language of the people of Jannah. And likewise, there is nothing that we need a cure for, except that we will find it in, in the works of the Salah. Except that we will find it in the works of the son of Uzzah. Never you have this, um, this book by Al Jurab al Sahih. And I don't mean to take too much time, I'm going to close now. But Al Jurab al Sahih, we mean that the idea in Messiah. That Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, Rahim al Atala. The, 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 the clear answer for the one who has converted from Christianity and right, into Islam. That Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, Rahim al Atala. The first translation of that book was by the disbelievers. The first translation of that book was by the disbelievers. They wanted to see what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahim al-Atala had to say for the individual that, that leaves Islam, for the individual that leaves a Christianity and converts to Islam. So this is something important. They're reading our books. Who's left alone the books of the Salaf? Who's left alone the light? They didn't suffice with the translation. Why are we sufficing with the translation? They knew that the source of this religion is in the original language. Why don't we know that? Why are we heedless of this? So this is something very important for us to reflect over. We ask Allah and we to make it from the most those people that understand this reality and implement it and work toward it. We ask Allah for the to give us the truth. And this is, I, I, I keep saying this, but I'm going to close on this. SubhanAllah. And I'm from New York, and many of you know that I'm from New York. Many other places in America don't have as many Jews as New York. But if you go around to Eastern Parkway, why do you find Hebrew 
uh, Hebrew colleges and Hebrew universities and Hebrew learning institute, institutes and the like that, because the Jews in America don't want their children to lose the original language of their religion. The Jews in America, they do not want their children to lose the original language of their religion. And because of that, you find Jews that are being raised in New York, they know Hebrew. Children speak Hebrew and they speak English. They read Hebrew and they read English. So why don't you find many of the Muslims far and wide in England, in America, and the likes of that? Why don't you find Muslim children speaking Arabic and reading Arabic to Why don't you find that? SubhanAllah, this is something that we need to reflect over. I know that they're going to make us from the most of people that reflect over that reality. Allah knows best. He said, Allah was so mubarak. And I'm Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam to say And I'll take, uh, I'll take five questions. I'll just take five questions because it's very late and uh, we have other commitments. No, trouble. Okay, the first question, which is mentioned, uh, after completing Arabic books such as Medina series, what Islamic book would you advise a student to start reading for the beginning level? Um, you have, uh, you have the Arba'in in you have the 40 Hadith by Imam al Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala, and the, the, an easy explanation of that, I would say to go for Sheikh, Sheikh Hussaini, his explanation in Arabic, or Sheikh Salam Fazan. So you have an Arabayin and Nawawiyah. Likewise, you have Usul al And these, somebody might say, but these are the books in Akira and lots of that. No, but the language is easy. But the language is easy. So if you go to Usul al and the easiest explanation to understand in Arabic is Sheikh Salam Fazan's. Sheikh Salam Fazan's Habib Allah Ta'ala, his explanation of Usul al is very easy. And his explanation of al Arbaini al- al- Nawiya is also very easy. So you have those books. You also have, um, also understand the Medina series. There's an issue about the Medina series. The Medina series is not the complete series. The Medina book one, two, three, four, that's not the complete series. There's other supplementary books that you should also study with those books. There are also supplementary books that you should also study with those books. Uh, al Kira'a wa Ta'abir. Al Kira'a. So you should find those books. You should find, and the brother uh, uh, Ammar, inshallah ta'ala, he can also help you with those books. There's, there's the Tadiribat, which is the, the, the main uh, Medina book, one, two, three, four. Then there's the Kira'a, and then there's also the Ta'abir. Those are also very good. As well as in the Arabic language, you have Kitab al-Asasi. You have Kitab al-Asasi, which is taught in, in Egypt. That's also a very good book. And you have Al-Arabiya Bain al you have Al Arabiya Bain al Those are all, all very good books to, to read. But in terms of your Islamic studies, then I would advise you with, like I said, Usul al Talata by Sheikh Salah Fuzan. I would advise you with explanation of Usul al Talata also by Sheikh Salah Fuzan. I would also advise you with um, uh, Usul al Sunnah. The book Usul al Sunnah by Imam Ahmed Rahim Allah Ta'ala. That's also very easy to understand. Also, Al Aqid, Sharh Al Aqid al Wasatiyah by Sheikh Salah al Fuzan. Sharh Al Aqid al Wasatiyah by Sheikh Salah al Fuzan, that's also very easy to understand. Sheikh Salah al Fuzan, Hadith Allah Ta'ala, in general, his explanation of books are, are very, he is very easy to understand. Sheikh Al uh, at times he's difficult to understand. But Sheikh Salah al Fuzan, Hadith Allah Ta'ala, he is, in general, he is easier to, he is easier to understand. Sorry, in continuing. The names of the surah uh, we mentioned from amongst the one second, we mentioned from amongst the the surah that we mentioned, surah Yusuf, the third verse, surah Yusuf, the third verse. We also mentioned um, surah Zuhrif, uh, surah Yusuf, the second verse, surah Zuhrif, the third verse. We mentioned surah Taha. Verse 113, we mentioned Surat Fusilat, I believe we mentioned Surat Fusilat, the 44th verse. Surat Fusilat, the 44th verse. We mentioned Surat Shura, Surat Shura, the 7th verse. 
And likewise, he mentioned Surah Ra'at, the 37th verse. Surah Ra'at, the 37th verse. The names of the dictionaries I mentioned, you had, uh, you had Haynes Weir, you had Haynes Weir, and one of the sisters wrote it, if you could write it again, Haynes Weir. You also had Oxford Word Power, you also had Oxford Word Power, which is, uh, Inglisi, Inglisi Arabi. Inglisi, Inglisi Arabi. And that's from Oxford uh, Press in the UK. And you also had um, the E.W. Lane Arabic English Lexicon. And I bought this, I think I bought this on Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn, maybe in 1990, 1995. 1995, maybe about 200, it was going for about $200. It's two, two thick volumes. It's two thick volumes. It's, uh, but it's not for a beginner. It's not for a beginner. A beginner should get al -Mawrid. A beginner should get al -Mawrid. There's a thick book, thick Arabic English dictionary called al -Mawrid. That's for beginner. Haynes Weir is slightly above a beginner. And the E.W. Lane lexicon, that's for advanced. That's for an advanced learner. So I'm not going to tell if you're a beginner that you should start from Haynes Weir or you should start from either the Ulay, no, you should start from al -Mawrid. You should start from al -Mawrid. Um So those, I believe, were the three. And then you had the, the 201 and the 501 Arabic verbs. And this is printed by Barons. This is printed by Barons, and you can find it in, uh, uh, you can find it in, uh, what is that? Barnes and Noble. You can find it in Barnes and Noble. The means of learning Arabic, uh, it's important that you have a teacher. It's important that you have uh, a teacher. I mean, you can, there's only so much, there's only so far you can get with learning Arabic by yourself. It's important that you have a teacher. Uh, some might ask, ask about Marcus al Bayan, which is uh, run by the brother Ammar. Uh, but I, you know, to be honest, I don't know the level of the Arabic. I, I have no idea. I've never. I visited years ago, when I visited Philly years ago, uh, and I believe the brother has an online program, but I don't know the level. I don't, I, I, so I can't, I can't uh, recommend if I don't know the level. You know, uh, I don't know, is it good for beginners? Is, I, I, I'm not at all involved in the affairs of the markers in terms of the instruction on the affairs, so I don't know. But alhamdulillah, you know, I'm sure someone can benefit from them. Uh, so it's important that you have a teacher. It's important that you have a teacher. It's important that you're consistent. It's important that you implement that which you learn. You know, so when you learn different words and different uh, grammatical structures, it's important that you try to implement it. Uh, the best thing that was for me in learning the Arabic language was to come to live in a, in a, to live in a society that speaks that language. The best thing for me was to come and live in a society that speaks that language. So by coming to Saudi Arabia and living in Saudi Arabia, it helped me a lot. And being amongst the Arab, I go, yes. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the lecture, they make fun of you if you speak pure Arabic. But some of them know. Some of them, they, they, they encourage you. You know, I don't mean all of them make fun of you. You know, but especially if they know you're a learner. If they, if they know you're a learner, they're going to encourage you. And they're going to respond to you in pure Arabic. Because most of them can speak it. Because most of them can can speak it. So living or even visiting an Islamic society or a society that speaks Arabic, it, it helped me out a lot. And today, one of the best places for learning Arabic is Egypt. One of the best places for learning Arabic is Egypt. It's cheap. Although not everyone can survive in Egypt, it's, it's very difficult. It's, it's very difficult in terms of cleanliness, in terms of water. Um, you know, it's very difficult. But mashallah, mashallah, alhamdulillah, many of the brothers and sisters they visited because they have institutes for brothers and sisters and for children. So if you can't make it to Saudi Arabia, not everyone can make it to Saudi Arabia. One of the best places to go, six months, a year. You know, even if you have three months, even if you have one month, is to go is to Egypt. It's very cheap. Housing is cheap. Food is cheap. And the institutes are cheap. And you pay, and it's very consistent. 
you know, it's very consistent. But the point is, if you come back, let's say you go to, you say, I'm, you say I'm going to go learn the language of the Quran for six months. So you go to Egypt for six months. When you come back, or even three months, when you come back, you have to implement. What you should do is you should talk Arabic. You should read Arabic. You should have some books. You should listen to Arabic lectures. It's very important. Not that you just go to Egypt for three months or a month and you come back and you just speak in English. No, you're supposed to be speaking Arabic. You know, I know some brothers, they went there, some families, some sisters, they went there, they came back, and Kalas, they speak Arabic in their home. With their children, they speak Arabic. You know, and uh, this is something very important. And this is something that we need to do. Something that we need to do. We need to speak Arabic in the home as much as we know. We need to implement it. We need to speak Arabic. Idris, they are women. Ta'ala. You know, uskut, la tatakallam, or qul bi yameenik, and whatever, even if it's just orders and prohibitions and, you know, whatever. Kayfa halak al yawm. Ayna tadhab ya akhi, and, you know, ayna tadhab ina, ayna tadhab ina ya ukhti, ma la turideen, stuff like this. You need to implement that Arabic, even if it's only a small portion, but you need to implement it, and you need to, to practice it, and, and, to, and to learn new words and the likes of that. So the best thing is to get a teacher, that, and... Greater than that is to move even to visit an Islamic society or an Arabic-speaking society, to buy books, to come back, to listen to it while you're in your car, you know, until you get to the point where you will hear a person speak Arabic and it is as if they are speaking English. That's what you're going to get. And I'm telling you, that's what you're going to get. When you continue to learn Arabic, after some time, you will speak to people and they will talk Arabic to you and you understand them as if they're speaking English, you can understand the shir, you can understand the 75, 80% of the Quran when Allah's, when you hear the Quran being recited, you understand it, as if, as if it's English. And, and yes, you can reach that point. You get to the point where you start uh, having dreams in Arabic and the likes of that, yes, it can happen. But you have to give it, uh, you have to give it some focus. And Allah Ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَحَدُوا فِينَا لَا نَحْدِي أَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Whoever struggles in our path, we will guide them. Whoever struggles in our cause, we will guide them to our past. So this is something which is important. With that, I believe some effective ways to study Arabic while studying in school, you have to have a schedule. You have to have a schedule. And that was something, you know, when I was first began studying Arabic, uh, when I first began studying Arabic, I realized that, you know, there's some things that I can benefit from the Kufar, so I went out and I bought a few books on, uh, you know, study tips and how to organize your time and, you know, stuff like that. So those were some of the books that I benefited from, and I benefited, benefited tremendously, you know, how while you're, while you're studying and try to manage school, work, family, how should you organize your time and the likes of that. And it's important that you have a schedule and that you stick to your schedule. And even if you fall off your schedule, you know, once you uh, are no longer busy, you can go back to the schedule. So timing, timing is in you know, time management. Time management is very important when you're trying to learn uh, a new language. When you're trying to learn a new, new language, time management is very important. With that, I have to stop now.